Professor Cohen to come up and offer his observations. Thank you, Dan. I'm delighted to be here in sunny Southern California this morning. So, I understand it's 75 and sunny in Washington today, and I came here. Uh, I've always felt that Harry Harding was the finest analyst of Chinese affairs uh, that we had in this country, and um, for the most part, I'm inclined to agree with my previous assessment on the basis of what I've heard today, with one exception. Did you notice when he talked about the disciplines that we needed <laughs> to analyze Chinese affairs and to make our policy decisions? Agriculture, <laughs> economics, <laughs> political science. Without history, we go nowhere. So <laughs> please keep that in mind. <laughs> now, uh, June has given us an excellent overview of the relationship since 1971. Uh, and uh, I think in her discussion of talking across each other, she's touched on uh, all of the uh, core issues. Uh, I was uh, reasonably pleased uh, with what she presented. Uh, Bill has given us uh, important correctives to some of the myths about the uh, impact of China's economic growth on the United States. Uh, probably won't do any good. Uh, <laughs> when I sit in on congressional briefings in Washington from time to time, uh, my sense is that people there are not really interested in reality. They're interested in what their constituents think is reality. Uh, and uh, they don't seem to have any commitment to teaching their constituents or their uh, the core interest groups that support them uh, in, in dealing with reality. So you know, we've got some problems there. I think he makes one point that I think we just desperately need to get across to everybody, and maybe it's simple enough to even persuade Chuck Schumer uh, of it, and that is that uh, the two economies are complementary, uh, and that we can benefit each other and for the most part have. Sure, there are problems, there are places where we have a lot of work to do, and there are a lot of reasons to be irritated uh, with the Chinese, uh, but on the whole, uh, the point about complementarity, I think, is, is critical uh, and one that we probably can sell. Uh, when Bill turns to political reform, uh, I have <laughs> some serious reservations. Uh, I think uh, I'm not persuaded about the progress that the Chinese are making. Yes, this isn't the China of Mao. It's not the Cultural Revolution. We haven't had a Tiananmen massacre. Uh, of late, uh, but uh, I think he's overly optimistic about where China is going in terms of political reform. But, you know, it's early in the conference. We have a number of people who are going to be talking about these issues. Uh, I'm open to persuasion, maybe. Uh, now, uh, I have a couple of points to make, which Harry would probably say were moralistic, but uh, <laughs> I think I'm going to make them anyway. Uh, and I think they underscore some of the points that June, Bill, and Harry uh, made. Uh, first of these is that the United States and China are not friends. Uh, leading Chinese officials and leading Chinese intellectuals uh, have stressed the continued existence of contradictions uh, between uh, the two countries. Uh, and China come what may, will continue to seek to balance against the United States. Uh, and this is a much easier task for the Chinese these days as a result of rising anti-Americanism uh, in response to the recent follies of the American government. Uh, and it, you know, it's quite clear that China intends to replace the United States as the preeminent power in East Asia. Uh, perhaps like June, I'm not sure that just because they were once, they're entitled to become the preeminent power again. Uh, nonetheless, uh, we have no choice but to learn to live together uh, and to cooperate. 
some years ago, uh, after a lecture I gave in Washington, Harry Harding rose and asked me uh, what interests the two nations shared. Uh, that list has grown, as will be apparent uh, in the presentations today uh, and tomorrow. You know, the environment, nonproliferation of uh, weapons of mass destruction, of drugs, of disease, uh, trade and investment issues, uh, peace in East Asia, uh, to name the most obvious shared interests. China needs good relations with the United States for economic and security reasons, and not least, it needs the United States to restrain Taiwan. Uh, China, at minimum, wants to appear to be that responsible stakeholder uh, we've been asking her to become. Uh, the recent Chinese mission to Sudan about Darfur that June mentioned earlier, uh, I think is a case in point. Uh, there's no question whatsoever that China is much more interested in oil than it is in stopping genocide. Uh, but the Chinese government was embarrassed by the campaign that Mia Farrow and Steven Spiel Spielberg launched uh, to about Chinese behavior in Darfur. And I think that's a very good and promising sign for the future. I can't imagine Mao or even Deng ever being embarrassed uh, by anything of the sort. Now, China's current strategy is clearly to cooperate or to appear to cooperate. Uh, nobody knows how long that's going to last. Uh, no one here knows that. No one in Beijing can predict what China's intentions will be should it equal or surpass American power at some point uh, in the future. Uh, we don't know whether this peaceful rise is tactical uh, or strategic. And that's one of the reasons I would hesitate to go along with what I saw as the implicit in Bill's talk. Uh, I would not be quite so ready to write off Japan. And of course, there are a lot of obstacles to China's continued rise that you'll hear about today and tomorrow. Now, at this point, I'm supposed to give you policy recommendations, and I don't have any. Uh, I'm going to leave that to Harry tomorrow, so show up <laughs> for his panel discussion. Uh, my only suggestion is to avoid deceiving the American people, uh, as Kissinger and Nixon did in the 1970s when they betrayed Taiwan, uh, and as the Clinton administration did in the 1990s when it extended unconditional MFN to China, suggesting that by pushing trade, uh, China would inevitably become a democracy. So, you know, in the end, my final thought is, you know, we've got to get along with China, but we need not prettify the regime. Uh, and I think we have to be careful that when we go around explaining Chinese behavior, that we don't end up apologizing for it. Thank you.